Hello and welcome to St. Anthony's. Today is Sunday, June 20th, and our Mass is being offered for fathers everywhere. Happy Father's Day, including our Heavenly Father. Let us take a minute to consciously acknowledge that we are in the presence of God and ask him to help us to hear what he wants to say to us today. Today's first reading is from the book of Job, which deals with the persistent question of why bad things happen to good people. The book does not answer the question, but it does assure us that God is present to us in the storms of life and that he is more powerful than the greatest of storms. Today's verses are intended to reassure Job that no matter how severe or unbearable his suffering might be, God is present to him and is more powerful than the evils that might beset him. This should lead Job to place his trust in God. In the second reading, Paul says that it is the overwhelming sense of God's love which impels and drives him. This love of Christ leads him to reflect on how that love was played out in the death that Jesus died for us. Then Paul reflects on the relationship between Christ's death and the way in which he has died to self by being joined to Christ in a new creation. In that new creation, we live for him, whom we now know, not according to the flesh, but in an entirely new way. In today's gospel, Jesus exercises his power in such a way that puts him on a par with God, for only God has power over the wind and the seas. Unfortunately, the disciples do not yet have sufficient faith to see God at work in Jesus. This story is intended not only to point out the mighty power of God at work in Jesus, but also to bring comfort and courage to a young church frightened by persecution. Mark is saying to his fledgling church, and to us, that although there may be times in life of the church, often imaged as a boat, when she will be threatened by the forces of evil and confusion, no force, however frightening, will prove to be a match for the power and presence of God at work in Jesus. On our part, we are called to cultivate unwavering faith in our powerful and caring Savior. Let us pray. Loving and powerful God, you are the rock in the storms of our lives. Your love is always with us, no matter what we face. Deepen our faith in your presence and love. Turn us toward you when we attempt to rely on ourselves. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 561, Sing of the Lord's Goodness. 561, verses 1 and 4.
it with you. God, each and every day, called us to put our faith and our trust in him, especially times in our lives when we feel afraid and alone. Let us pause for what just like the times of our lives when we have not, when we have failed to put our complete trust in God. For these times, let us ask the Lord for his hard mercy. Lord Jesus, you calm the storms. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you make all things new. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us strength. You give strength to the weak. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
mounted up to heaven, they sank to the depths. Their hearts melted away in their Obey. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Who here has ever felt alone over your things are over your beyond your control, helpless, full of fear? Anyone? If you live long enough, you probably felt this way. Excuse me? All the above. So you and the disciple have something greatly in common today. I imagine they must have felt that way. And in this situation, you see, the storm, the, the evening was drawing too close. Was coming, it was getting dark, and the winds was picking up. The squall, it was such a powerful wind, and the storms and the waves was over, overcoming the boat. They lost control of the boat. They were afraid. The boat was in danger of sinking. And it's in this situation, you can imagine that Jesus at the stern of the boat, what was he doing? Sleeping. Sleeping. In my mind, I thought to myself, boy, he must be quite a sleeper. You can imagine the boat rocking back and forth. The disciples were afraid. And, they, and so what did they say to Jesus? Are you not worried? Are you, do you not care? Are, do you not care? We are perishing. We are dying. We are in mortal danger. Do you not care? I don't know about you, but how many of you have ever said that in your life? When, when life was so overwhelming, you feel so alone that you, in your heart, you felt, boy, does God not care? I went to church today. I did my duties, and you, you know, I believe that you, I received you in the Eucharist, and yet nothing happened. How come do I feel, still feel so alone? That things are not changing my life. I still feel so scared. How many of you ever felt that way? Yeah. That, you know, that you still feel so alone. A while ago back, not long ago, there was a town called Lanakani. It's about the size of Walport, 2,500 people in Maryland, in the mountains of Maryland. It was so isolated that few ever go there. And the town was far away from everything else. And there had, and I had to laugh because I saw, when I heard about this, uh, read about the, the, the town. It only had one red light. <laughs> Sound familiar? Yeah. <laughs> well, not long ago, the town, someone in town won a lottery. Won the mega jackpot to $731 million. Wow. Now, nobody knew who exactly was one person who actually who won. No who it is, but nobody knew. What do you think happened in that town? Excuse me? It became yes. The gold diggers decided to help themselves and come to town to find out who won the money. What do you think also happened to the town occupant? Got less friendly. Why? Because they were all thinking the other person had That's why they were checking their neighbors out to see who <laughs> won. They were unprotective of them? Excuse me? They were, I would have thought they'd be protective of them. Well, they don't know who it is. Oh. And over a course of time, someone decided to send an anonymous letter to, to a lot of members of the town and said, this couple, this couple won the money. What do you think happened to them? Oh my. To this yeah, couple? <laughs> yes, everyone was calling them, checking them out, looking at them closely, that eventually they got so frustrated, they didn't know what to do. They kept denying, we didn't win anything. Look, we, got, we bought nothing new. You know, we weren't still the same old people. And so they finally had to take out advertising in the local paper that said, no, we did not win, okay? Look at, look at we promised we didn't win. And so, you know, the town was suspicious and everyone was looking at each other you know, a pretty, they were like a closely knit community, and now from, from a community full of joy, now to a community of full suspicions. Everyone is checking each other out in their driveway, you know, going on fancy vacation or anything else, anything that disappears, give any indication. And of course, 
the poor store manager where the ticket was bought. People, yes, you know, just ever, yes, wow. your family owned a store. And they kept calling and calling to make sure, you know, that the manager know. Of course, he didn't know, but on the good note is that because he, uh, the store sold the winning ticket, they got $100,000. Wow. And so he decided to give the employees a share of that money depending upon how much they work. Some got a few hundred dollars, some got a few thousand dollars. But you know, the biggest question that they often ask each other, you know, the people ask themselves is, well, you never know, you're never gonna get it unless you ask. And so that's their premise. They felt they were entitled to the money. Whoever won the money should give some to them. And I wonder, you know, do we feel that way in our life? When we, in our life, in our life, when we're struggling, do we turn to everywhere else except to who? God. To God. Yeah. And as a result, our life is filled of misery, worry, suspicion, and we feel so alone. And the Lord is, you know, if you notice today, was a, did the Lord Jesus ever abandon them? No. No. He was always there with them. It's just that he didn't choose not to respond. So the reality, were they ever really in danger? No. no. They were not. Remember when they were in the sea. It's really not a sea if you get to Israel. Because Israel is the Sea of Galilee. Which is a large lake between Israel and Syria. One side is one country, the other is another, you know, another country. It's a large lake. And because they were so far from shore, they were overwhelmed. And we too in our life at times, we can feel overwhelming. And if you look at today's gospel, how did, what did Jesus do when he was awoken? What did he say to them? Oh, ye of little faith. Oh, ye of little faith. That you have forgotten that I'm here with you at this very moment of your life that I never left you. And if you, if you, if you, if you, um, ask, you know, ask yourself, if God is there, why does he allow me to be afraid? Why does he allow me to feel so alone, so overwhelmed? That's when we can also really feel his love. If? Well, if we, if we, if we, Yes, if we turn to him. If we turn to him. A friend of mine whose grandfather was dying one day told, you know, told him, shared him with him a little story. He said, you know, son, when you, when you are born into this world, you, you are the only one crying. Yeah. And everyone else around you, what are they doing? Rejoicing. They're rejoicing. They're smiling. But you know it's going to be different the day when you die. Because at that day, you'll be smiling and everyone else is crying. Is crying. <laughs> and I thought to myself, why? What a poignant story. Yes, you'll be smiling if you're, di if you're dying. If what? <laughs> if you believe in God. If you believe that the Lord is there at light at the end of a tunnel to welcome you. That you will, will fade not into emptiness, that your life, you know, it's like someone switching off the light switch, and that's it, the last light, and that's it. If you believe this is what your life meant to be, and how we face death, how we face life, depends upon our faith, our relationship with Jesus. And that's why oftentimes, you know, we forget, we think, at least my perception is that we think, if I go through the motion of being the, a Catholic, I give my, you know, my collection, I go to church on Sundays, or maybe twice a year, <laughs> Easter and Christmas, I've done my job. My relationship with God is good. Is that really true? No. What does it take? If I don't want to be afraid in my life, if I don't want to feel alone, if I don't want to feel overwhelmed, what does it take of me? My daily commitment. If you, you know, look at your own life, you don't have to look that far. 
If you want to feel your spouse's love, if you want to feel loved by your children, and you don't want to feel alienated by your, from your spouse, from your children, from your neighbors, from your, you know, from your friends, what does it take? It takes commitment, but what, what else? Relationship. That you have to really communicate with them, don't you? You have to let them inside your world. Because guess what? If you live with your spouse and you keep secrets from each other, when you don't share with each other your fears, your worries, things that really are important to you, what happens to your relationship? It goes apart. Eventually, you don't know each other anymore. You know, to share your life with each other, to be honest with each other, is that a scary, risky thing? Yes. Yes. Why is it scary? Why is it risky? Yes, you risk rejection. Yes, you risk rejection. You risk betrayal. Look how many couples, when they are divorced, what happens to all that love and all that secrets they share with their spouse? It disappears. It disappears. Well, if they're lucky, it turns into. It comes back at them. It haunts them. This is what he did to me. He, you know. Media. Excuse me? They, they, some of them post it on social media. Yes, they social media or they bring it to their lawyers to make sure they get a, a good cut of the, the property. Or they turn it, you know, they turn to all their friends. Look what he did to me. I'll tell you all his secrets in the marriage. What happened? Maybe she did that to him. Yeah, well, they did to each other, right. But either way, the, 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 the once that game is played, what happens? It escalates, right? Yeah. And both, as a result, who wins? Oh. No. Neither of them will win. And what happens to the children in all this? Torn They're torn and both look hate their parents. I mean, they both not lose respect for their parents. And you know, my brothers and sisters, how many lives do, are we given in this life? One life. One life to live. And we have a choice to make. I know it's scary. I know it's risky. But you know, yes, you may be betrayed and hurt by, by the people of this world. But you know who will never betray and leave you high and dry? Jesus. Jesus. And ultimately, that's what we're called to put our faith and our trust in Jesus. Because Jesus has put his faith and our trust in us. He does that each and every, and every Mass. By how? Eucharist. By Eucharist, by truly giving His body, soul, and spirit into our hands, into, into us. Now, whether how we choose to treat Him, it's up to who? Yes. To us, to each and every one of us. And so it's not enough just to receive the Eucharist, but to receive truly the Eucharist, and you really want to, not to feel alone. That you, you, it's, it's necessary that you put your faith and your trust in him. That you're honest him. It's okay sometimes. Don't you ever tell your spouse sometimes when you're angry at him to let him or her know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that's what relationship is about, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Because if you're so afraid that my spouse won't love me anymore, you know, won't respect me anymore if I don't tell him how I feel, if you're that afraid, what does that say about your relationship? Not much there. There's not much there. That's right. And I guarantee you, God can take it. God will never abandon you. Unlike other people, God will never do that. And so today, my brothers and sisters, I just invite you to take a risk in your life. To trust in Jesus. To trust in each other. Yes, I know it's risky to trust your spouse sometimes to trust your children, to trust other people. But of course, if you don't do that, what happens to your life? You what? You isolate yourself. You feel alone. You will say, well, nobody understands me. Nobody seems to care about me. Well, is it understandable why you feel that way? Because you never let them in your life. You never let them know who you are. And so today, my brothers and sisters, I just invite you 
to put your faith and your ultimate faith and trust in Jesus and in one another. I know it's not easy, little by little, but that not that that's what life is about? That ultimately, that's what it is? And so today, my brothers and sisters, I just invite you to do that in your life, that in doing so, may you and I never feel alone, never feel abandoned, but instead we always feel the comfort and the joy of Christ in our life and in one another's lives. Amen. 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 Let us together confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, the light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, Consecration with the Father, to ruin all things to remain, for us men and for our salvation, to be made a man from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and became a man. For our sake, he was crucified and conscious of He suffered the death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, and in accordance with the Scriptures. He descended into heaven. And see the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and to see the one God and the man. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the glory and glorified, who has fallen to the cross. I believe in the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. church touch all humanity with healing and nourishment let us pray to the Lord Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer that nations compete with one another to bring peace instead of war let us pray to the Lord Lord hear our prayer. prayer that those whose lives have been disrupted by natural disaster find the strength and assistance they need to rebuild let us pray to the Lord Lord, Lord hear our prayer, prayer. That fathers cherish their wives, protect their children, and act as a source of strength in their neighborhoods and communities. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord be our prayer. That all who have died may experience the embrace of our loving God in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord be our prayer. And for our own personal and special intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord be our prayer. Let us also pray for all fathers as we celebrate Father's Day weekend, that God's blessing may be upon them. We pray to the Lord. Lord God of the universe, you open your hand and fill all things with blessing. Grant us faith enough to trust in you and love you enough to do your will. We ask to Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Our presentation of the guest song is Be Still and Know That I Am God, number 465. Oh, my God. 
all of you and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may bear and call heir to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him. O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>
Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not so good, but it is what it is. So I just uh, keep you, ask you in mind, well, I'm going to give you a bunch of changes, announcements coming up. And you may feel overwhelmed, have a major headache coming along. <laughs> but remember, don't sweat it because it's all in the church bulletin. It's all in written form online, well, not written form but online for you to look at at your convenience to, to study it carefully. So you will be shocked in the upcoming weeks. Now, one of the change next week will be the daily mass schedule. It will be, the daily mass schedule is from Tuesday to Thursday. Friday. And, Friday. Oh, Friday. There you go. <laughs> I messed up myself already. Yes, from Tuesday, what did I say? Thursday. Thursday. Okay. See, that's what happened to change. You still adjusted to the old schedule. From Tuesday to Friday, Mass will be at 9 a.m. in the morning. And of course, the Bible study will follow that on Wednesday at 9.30 in the morning, after the morning Mass. Don't look at me. <laughs> Someone's feeling a little guilty, I see. You can always you know, tell a guilty conscience. <laughs> Well, do join us for this wonderful Bible study upcoming because not only are you fed for your soul, you're also fed with wonderful fresh brew coffee and fresh baked pastry with fruits in there. So do join us. We'll have a great time and be connected once again as a community of, of believers in the Word of God. 
and also looking forward ahead on, in, on uh, starting 4th of July, the upcoming months, that's not far off, we will have an additional Mass on Sunday at 10.30 in the morning. So the Mass on Sunday, yes, I know you like to sleep in, Susan, <laughs> is it follow 9 a.m. and then 10.30. Saturday will remain the same at 4 o'clock, so keep that in mind. And of course, for those... Not yet. Okay. I'm still debating about that. Too okay. much change, too much shit scary for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, there's been some, uh, some people who love war. But I can see the argument for war, but we'll talk about that later. Because I know, well, I'll just tell you right now. Part of the thing, one of the good things about 4 o'clock is I know this is, an, yes, I hate to say this, we're get, all getting older. Yeah. Someday, Rosa, you'll understand yeah. when you join the older club that, you know, Especially as winter comes. Yes, it gets darker, it's hard to drive, but that's the reality. For those who are not able to join us, you ha we have online mass. So do join us each and every day. And I know a while ago back, you know when changes happen, rumors begin to blossom. A lady thought, what do you mean? You're not going to have online mass anymore? She lives in Arizona. She says, oh my gosh, I'm part of me kind of dying. <laughs> and you know, that's when, the, when God is really alive in your heart, you hunger and miss him when you don't join him. So I just invite you to consider making God in every day of your life. Also, remember, uh, July is an exciting month. We have the Strawberry Festival coming up on July the 3rd on Saturday in the Parish Hall from 10 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. So what was your, your answer to that lady who asked you that question? Oh, Mass will continue to be online for her to join us. On Facebook and then you on later Facebook, on YouTube. And then on YouTube, right. I see what was very happy. <laughs> so getting back to Stroy Festival, it's on, uh, on, yes, until 30 or until dawn. So if you wait later, that's at your own risk. Is it Strawberry Shortcake? Mm -hmm. Yes, Strawberry Festival, Strawberry Shortcake, okay. yes. Okay. Also, uh, my July 11th is, we're having anniversary for me. I, at the, after the 1030 Mass, we'll have a wonderful cookout gathering together to praise and give thanks to God. And also, it's not only about me, but what is it also about? A community, we're coming back together again. That's something that hasn't happened for quite a period of time. That we can actually, you know, since last week, I was shocked to see people's faces. <laughs> <laughs> you know, things you take for granted for a whole year. It's like, oh, it's really happening. I get to see what you guys look like. Any longer, I may not know who you are anymore. Who are these people? <laughs> no, all kidding aside, yes, it's a wonderful thing. Uh, also, remember for all our couples that are celebrating the anniversary, you are the beacon of hope for couples that are struggling. Believe it or not, you are. I know it because I, I hear all the time when people give me a, a little uh, reflection on my online mass. And, Who's Bob? I mean, who's Jim and Shirley? I always hear them all the time. That show just never stopped yakking. No, all kidding aside. No, but I mean, all kidding aside, you know, they're, they're inspired by your life. Even though they never met you from thousands of miles away, your struggles, your, you know, when you hear a superhero, you know, you oftentimes, you only hear the good points. But, you know, when you hear about their struggle, who, how they get to where they are, it doesn't happen by accident. And when we celebrate, when you celebrate your anniversary, it shows that God's grace is there, that true love does exist. That you know, two free people, two people can be committed to each other, not by force, but by desire, that they really love each other. So I just invite you to be a witness of that, to do of your, of your love for each other, to help other couples that they too can weather the storms in their life. That guess what? Does everyone have storms? The times they feel isolated, the times they want to choke their spouse, the times they just are barely hanging on? Do they? Yes. They do. But in the midst of that, God's grace is there. Believe it or not, He is there. 
So I just invite you for all a couple celebrating the anniversary coming up. Don't let it go by. Celebrate it. Embrace it. Allow us to celebrate with you. Let us know a month in advance. We'll schedule a mass intention for you. And then we'll put your, if you can send us a picture of your wedding day and also a current picture, an appointed memory of that day, where you were married, you were married and what, you know, appointed memory. Because in doing that, not only are you giving witness to, to others, but also what are you doing for, for yourselves? Celebrating. You're celebrating, you're remembering of God's love for you. I just encourage you to do that. Rejoice with us together as a family of Christ. Also, remember to pray to, uh, tomorrow, especially for Camille, Oscar, and Michael. He'll be confirmed this Sunday coming up tomorrow at the 9 a.m. Mass. And also, uh, remember to be our guest columnist. I thank those who have generously contributed their article. And I'm always amazed, the more and more I find out about you guys, the more I'm awed and inspired you know, about your struggles and who, how you got to where you are. It makes me admire you even more. Not that I think I, think I can't anymore. I, I always get, oh, wait a minute, wow, that's amazing. So I just invite you to continue to share your story because you know, a community of faith, oftentimes as a Catholic, do we really know each other? No. Yeah. We don't. We just know the car each other drive or maybe a few things here and there, how many kids the other have. But there's a lot more to you than that, isn't there? Yeah. 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 And your struggle is inspiring for other people. So I just invite you to consider being a guest columnist. Share your story. And in doing that, you give witness to God. Because that's what, when you look at it, that's what Paul does all the time. St. Paul, that his is a testimony. So you are also called to be give testimony. So I just invite you to consider doing that. And we have our own Lisa Gough Hoffman, who's our lector, agreed to do that for you. So if you have, need help, She'll help you to write your article. <coughs> Let us pray. Renew and nourish by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son. We ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Say, Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, Cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who proud about the world seeking to ruin the souls. Amen. Our closing hymn is number four thirty-one. Bless be the Lord. Uh, we'll do all three verses. Four three one. Thank you.